which brings us a little bit into the direction of bone disease. You may have heard of osteoporosis or brittle bone disease. If the actual cells of making and breaking bone, if they're in the nicest balance that they're supposed to be, the rate of break and make is the same. We have got a nice solid enough layer of bone. However, if you've got osteoclasts doing way too much, you will get a much more spo spongy appearance in the bone and a gradual erosion of the bone and bones are more likely to break. Now, now the different bands between the cells. I think I said something wrong a bit earlier on these slides. So the osteoclasts are the breaking it cells. The osteoblasts themselves, they then differentiate into the osteocytes. The, the osteocytes themselves are the mature cells that will, once differentiated, turn into new bones. So the osteoblast is the um, the stem cell to go with this. Now, the replacement rate is about 10% of your bone per year. So all your cells are continuously replacing your skeleton in 10 years time will no longer be the skeleton you have now. This list here is by no means complete. Calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, selenium, you name it, it's all temporarily stored in bone and together makes up its strength. The key ones, the calcium, the phosphorus. Now, calcium and vitamin D in combination is kind of a key one. Um, calcium is the actual mineral that's deposited in bone. However, in order to absorb calcium from your diet, you do require vitamin D. Now, vitamin D Oh, well, lack of either, lack of calcium or lack of vitamin D will lead to rickets or osteoporosis or uh, there are various bone diseases that it can lead to. Um, lack of vitamin D, so a lack of sunlight and a lack of oily fish eggs, whatever contains vitamin D for your diet or the vitamin D made in your skin directly as UV radiation hits your skin. Um, Vitamin D needs to be there for you to be able to absorb calcium and give it that strength to withstand impacts. Right, a bit of a gap text. You might want to pause the video here. You have got the keywords on the side. Pause the video. I'm just going to reveal the relevant keywords now. There you go. Another two quick questions to help you settle in. Again, pause quickly now what cells are involved in the remodeling and in building of bone and which differentiates into what and also which minerals and which vitamins are required by your bone to harden. Pause the video and do it. As always, these sort of graphs can pop up on you in exams. Bone mass in males and females across their lifetimes, across age. Um, males being more physically active in general and higher muscle mass will also have a higher bone mass. Um, a marked decrease for women around the age of 55-ish when menopause hits and the lack of um, estrogens, we, it, it's linked to the absorption of calcium in your diet and therefore loss due to menopause. And obviously, if women hit menopause earlier, that decrease starts earlier, which leads to the question as in hormonal replacement therapy, is there a point in doing it? Yes, there's a risk of, of increased cancers if a lady is undergoing hormon, hormonal replacement therapy. However, otherwise, the risk of fractures at an older age, which can be the last fracture and the fatal fracture that a, a woman has in her life. Uh, that's something to consider and weigh off against one another. To go with osteoporosis is a whole lot of how can we avoid bones going weaker. And it's mainly weight bearing exercise that will remodel your bone and increase osteoblasts to actually build up, um, build up strength again. But the risk factor is not only menopause. Risk factors for osteoporosis, there you go, age, family history, inflammatory conditions, something like rheumatoid arthritis or anything else, um, that can just generally cause inflammatory markers that would be part of the immune system lot. General medical condition, alcohol use, smoking is a key one as well. And it's not only exercise that can help with um, preventing against osteoporosis. So yes, the load bearing exercise, but also calcium and vitamin D, get that in drugs to enhance the calcium uptake, obviously reducing the smoking and alcohol and 
Um, also, it's a little bit of if you know that a fall can possibly cause a fracture, train someone how to fall in a way that it doesn't injure them. If you play judo or karate or any of those martial arts sports, you will practice, or gymnastics, you will practice falling in a way that you don't injure yourself with it. But also the hormone replacement therapy that if you know it's to do with the onset of menopause, can you, from a hormonal angle, replace the estrogens to not have that onset of osteoporosis too early? Little side note here, the keyword progressive overload is coming from the uh, personal trainer and fitness trainer background. It is the idea of always pushing a bit further than your body likes it. So the idea of having a little bit of pain associated with your exercise, because that's when the overhealing will be taking place. And the little bit of as if scar tissue was being formed while you're overhealing, the slight minor minuscule breaks that will form in bone. Exercise does stimulate both types of bone cells, but overall the benefit is clear and bone does strengthen. I went through those in a real rush earlier. So treatment and prevention does not only mean let's do exercise alone. It does need to be a proper combination of various different things. And weird enough, this could be a potential overlap question between the hormonal unit and so the sexual reproduction unit as well as this one here. Again, a couple of settling in questions for you. Pause the video and have a little think here. And then you go answers or potential answers. You might want to consider and look up a little extra on osteoporosis versus osteomalacia and rickets. Um, osteoporosis is more likely to hit with age and we're reaching a situation where bones are more likely to break, to fracture. Whereas with both rickets and osteomalacia, we have got more a bending of the bone itself as it goes too soft. Now, rickets is more often observed in children. And yes, in the UK, it's back on the increase. Uh, despite us being one of the richest countries in the world, but we have got rickets coming back in children with bones going relatively weak, soft. They bend under the increasing weight of the growing child um, and the deformities form. Uh, Osteomalacia can hit in older age as well, which is similar to rickets that literally uh, it's the vitamin D and calcium availability thing. So most likely the vitamin D, the just not getting outdoors enough with our current lifestyles and bones therefore can't lay down the calcium. They should go soft and bend. In children as well, the actual growth that takes place along the epiphyseal plate, the growth plate as such, that will be slowed down. So a retarded growth sounds like a horrible word, but it is a slowed down growth of children uh, in their early years. And it's vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D. Here comes the stuck between a rock and a hard place. If you expose your skin to sunlight, you've got a skin cancer risk. If you don't expose your skin to sunlight, your vitamin D levels will be low and the risk of rickets and osteomalacia will be a problem. So it kind of, you know what is meant to be done and it's kind of that safely increasing the light exposure to get more vitamin D. Or obviously the um, vitamin D exposure through your diet, if there isn't much in the diet, if the vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, so getting those butter, egg, fish, getting those oils into your body. Some people may choose not to have them. So other enriched on vitamin D foods might be the, foods might be the right thing or vitamin D tablets. Um, a nice little one. Babies of mothers that have their skin exposed to the sun will receive vitamin D through breast milk. In many cultures around the world, um, Women are to be indoors. Women's skin is supposed to be covered. You do not just go outside and go breastfeed uh, and go um, be outside in a bikini. Not every culture has got the same acceptance or not acceptance of what bearing skin in, in the open air, um, what is allowed there. Also, another one where biology is being a bit racist, darker skin tones require more sunlight to create the same amount of vitamin D within the body. So a dark skinned person will need to spend more time in the sun to make the same vitamin D levels as a white skinned person. So that's just uh, the background. And then from there, kind of thinking, what is the epidemiology and for which ethnic groups would you more likely seeing? Would you more likely see rickets and osteomalacia? Treatment options obviously include surgery where bones are being so bent that, for example, walking isn't possible. 
skeletal bone disease or osteogenesis imperfecta, it's one in 20,000 baby births that just arrive with poor muscle tone, the joints are loose, the most severe cases show fractures in utero already. So you will see that on the ultrasounds, the broken bones present already before birth. And obviously the birth process itself will break a whole lot more. Um, it's genetic. It's one singular amino acid, a small glycine being replaced by a larger amino acid. And then the collagen fiber itself cannot coil as tightly and it's kind of a wider, looser collagen fiber and the entire structural uh, density of bone itself just it just not functioning the way it is. Um, as is genetic, there isn't really a cure. Now, obviously, it is if you can increase the bone strength to prevent fractures and maintain that mobility, either through drugs, through exercise, physiotherapy, or through, phys uh, through surgery, actually physically placing rods into the bones, obviously that would be repeated exposure to surgery and to pain, then um, maybe you can get a, a person born with brittle bone disease to actually get a normal-ish life. As I said earlier, it comes to a range of uh, stages or severities and there will be babies born that will not live longer than a few minutes because of all the fractures that take place during the birth process. So difficult considerations if you do have a child with this with this condition. So that is it. I'll leave it to you to maybe buddy up and prepare 10 questions. You could pester your partner or buddy when we have your next in-class lesson. Um, what questions would you come up with if you were the examiner? How would you be asking questions on bone structure, bone modeling and reforming? Um, what keywords would you use and what pathology, what sort of illnesses or conditions would you potentially use in a question if you were the examiner? Well, I'll see you next lesson.